Okay, Tim, it seems from your presentation uh, this morning uh, that you seem to be a good coach of people and, and teams. Would that be an accurate description? I, yeah, I've, I've been a coach all my life. I, uh, I've played on a lot of teams, played a lot of hockey, and uh, coached my daughter, my son, and uh, lots of neighborhood kids. And uh, coaching's been a big part of my life, and obviously a big part of my philosophy. Because right. great coaches are givers. Great coaches care. Great coaches show up every day, and they understand you got to work hard, but you got to have fun too. So I, I'm big on that. I think it, you heard my Batman story. Yeah, so right. yeah. And uh, how did you recognize that that companies needed this sort of coaching? I, I you know, I think everybody does. I, I I don't think that coaching coaching whether you say it's in vogue now or or whether people realize that um, it's good to get a third party opinion or somebody who's outside of the day-to-day -day and may not be as biased. So I think coaching's a wonderful thing for individuals, for companies, and if you can go in and help them raise their game and their level, that's good for the company too. And I think people appreciate the investment. Some people call it cost, I would call it an investment. And can you give us a few anecdotes of uh, companies or organizations that have taken advantage of this uh, type of team building that you're trying to do and, and uh, what's, what some of the results are that you're proud of? Uh, well, I'm very proud. I, I'm proud of a, few, a number of companies that I've worked with. Um, one's a large paper tissue company, um, big Canadian company, and I've worked a lot with individuals on executive coaching. I have a partner who's worked, we've worked with them in French and English. And the power there is how do you create, I talk a lot about networking, even more so net giving. How do you build a culture where people help each other? How do you build a culture where it's not just their own feeling good about themselves, but it's more cross-pollination, cross-functional? That's what we do. So with this particular company, all of a sudden they have people all over the globe, all over North America, and all of a sudden they're connecting more. They realize that they're just people. They have the same, you know, we talk about balance, and what this company allowed me to do with them is talk about balance, and uh, therefore they feel good about it, they feel better about themselves, and then they perform better. Well, have you seen any changes? Yeah, I mean, you know, change is a big word. I, I, I personally, um, I don't think people change. I think they become more of who they really are over time. So how do I help them maximize their potential? So I think people grow and they adapt and they shift. I think process change changes, but people don't. So how can you get people, go in with people and help them be the best them? Because it starts with you. It always starts with you. If you can get good at you, and feel comfortable with yourself, well, that's great for you, but that's great for your company, your community, and everybody around you. So get good at you. And have you seen any uh, changes, or I, perhaps I should use a better word, any uh, developments in customer relationships, let's put it that way? Yeah, I mean, there's two types of customers. There's the internal customer and the external customer. So it's always customer first. What's important to them? I, I think the philosophy just of the more people you can help be successful, what's important to them, if you can ask them, and what's important to you, you are. So when I'm talking to you, if I can talk about what's important to you, if you have kids, or somebody comes up to me and says, how are Stephanie and Jeffrey my kids? They got me, they got me. So I think it's customer first, it's always customer first. Okay, well, thank you very much for your comments. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time.